near mint condition, the home of collected oh, edition. That cover is so awesome. Absolute format is the best way to own this store. Time to empty those wallets and fill those shelves. Hey, hey, all you mentees, Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And join me today as I get to talk about one of my favorite DC stories from Darwin Cook. This is the latest printing of The New Frontier. So what we're looking at here is DC, The New Frontier, the Deluxe Edition hardcover. So let's go ahead and get started. And welcome back, everybody. So what we're looking at here is the latest Deluxe Edition from DC Comics. This is one that came out late last year, but I didn't get a chance to talk about it, and I showed it in my haul, and so many of you wanted me to spotlight it and compare it to the Absolute Edition, so that's what I'm going to do today. So here we have the latest Deluxe Edition, and it is one of my favorite stories from DC Comics, DC The New Frontier, the Deluxe Edition, Darwin Cook, with Dave Stewart on colors. The spine, I've always been a big fan of this particular font and just the design. It just, I mean, Darwin Cook, of course, came from that field, right? Even uh, right before he tried to make it into comics again in the late 90s, uh, in the early 80s when they pretty much said no and he had to make money, he went to a magazine and started making logos and things like that. So it's really cool that he got to play with things like this when he came back. And then the back of the book right here does have a dust jacket. Uh, but the very first thing I want to do is kind of give you an idea of how big it is compared to the Absolute Edition. Right? The Absolute Edition is a little pricier, of course, and currently out of print. The new Deluxe Edition is $59.99. But let's make it fair and take this out of the dust jacket. This is the 15th anniversary. There's my leaflet. It's right. Monsters Align. The leaflet monsters. And what's really cool is that they're using the same design for this book here. Although this one has a glossy finish to it, the art on board does. The Absolute has this texture. I oh, love this texture so much. Look at the textbook texture that they use. But it is the exact same image. Um, just, I don't want to say blown up. You're getting just a little bit less than over here. Here, let me just kind of give you an example. Like this here stops at John Henry instead of seeing this body right here. But you kind of get the idea. Now, we'll look at the differences internally here in a little bit. But what I'm going to do is open this up, talk about the pitch, what makes this story so great, without really going into too many spoilers. Uh, or if any spoilers, really is going to be the pitch of the story. And then, of course, I'll do a comparison and talk about the build and the paper stock of this particular version. All right, let's go ahead and crack this book open. We have some white end sheets. Then we have DC The New Frontier, the deluxe edition with, I would say, Green Lantern, since he has, to me, he happens to be uh, the center of this book, like everything that kind of comes together because of Hal Jordan. And DC The New Frontier, the deluxe edition, Darwin Cook, writer and illustrator, uh, but you do have some guest artists through here, like Michael Cho, and colors, of course, being Dave Stewart, and the letter by Jared K. Fletcher. Table of content. Uh, you do have an introduction here by Paul Levitz, who, of course, ran DC Comics for a long time, and then the prologue. So what this collects is DC The New Frontier 1 through 6, and the Justice League New Frontier Special Number 1. That's the one that came with Justice League New Frontier, the animated movie and 520 pages. So what is the story about? It all starts on Dinosaur Island. Oh my gosh, this is so good, I love it. Okay, so chapter one features these characters known as the Losers. This all takes place in 1945 at the, at the very beginning. We're looking at about a 15 year span. So what this is, is a Darwin Cook's love letter to the Golden Age and Silver Age and kind of meshing up that particular era together. Pretty much, I, I talked a little bit about this at the beginning, when Darwin Cook wanted to break it into comics in the 80s, 
uh, he wasn't making any money and he wasn't that big then. So what he did is he took a step back and went into magazines and doing advertisements and things like that and eventually made it back into the world of comics through Bruce Timm. So we're looking at the WB animated series, Batman Beyond is probably what he's known most, uh, probably I think in the animation world that introduction of Batman Beyond. But then... He came back to comic books where he wanted to come. Did the whole Batman ego graphic novel. Started doing the Batman, or I'm sorry, Catwoman with that Brubaker. And then DC approached him to do a story about the Justice League. And this is during the high times of the JLA with Grant Morrison. So what he did was kind of give you this beautiful melting pot of DC superheroes and the war comics at the time because he includes things in here yeah, you'll see some sergeant rock in here you'll see the task force x and you're going to see the losers in here at the very beginning and you're going to see the silver age heroes and the golden age heroes kind of come together and acknowledge each other so it is set in its own continuity it's not part of dc canon but oh my gosh do you wish it was because it's so beautifully done so that's pretty much the background story behind this this book. Now, we kick it off, like I said, on Dinosaur Island, because where else are you going to start this? Where the losers, this group of four gentlemen right here, are set off to rescue this guy named Rick Flagg, who is escorting the scientists. And this is all after the end of World War II. However, he's caught up on this island, and they don't know if the scientist is still alive, but they need that information. They are all attacked by this huge dinosaur. By the way, if you are a fan of animals and you can't stomach animals being hurt, um, maybe skip the first chapter. It's still worth reading. Seriously, it's still worth reading. But I do like to tell people ahead of time because everybody's different. Now, the losers do get and like they end up getting wiped out by these dinosaurs, like each one of them. And I'm not going to go through every one of their deaths, but I do want to show you one of my favorite moments in here. Uh, now, one of the losers is this guy that's writing at the very beginning that you probably saw right here. This is the story of the losers, and this is John Cloud. He's writing what happened to them. Now, you don't get to see the whole story. That comes into play later on. Now, when John Cloud notices that the rest of his brothers are gone, the, the, that they're all dead, and he finally finds Rick Flagg, they're about to leave the island, and he tells Rick, you know, get the hell off the island without me. My brothers are dead. I need to avenge them. <laughs> now... I don't know if in his head he thought he was going to avenge them all uh, be by killing different dinosaurs or killing one main dinosaur, whatever it is. It leads to one of the most badass moments in comics. And what ends up happening is he ends up getting just mortally wounded and he looks up to the sky where he sees what could be a Native American riding a horse. And he wants that to be the last image he ever sees alive. So he closes his eyes, he pulls the pins on the grenades, and jumps into the effing dinosaur's mouth. Man, that is so badass. What a freaking awesome way to go. I am John Cloud. Later on, I promise this will come back and become one of the most important parts of the story. Because at first you're like, what the hell was that all about? Because then we go into America. We start seeing the... Uh, the, the McCarthanism uh, affecting superheroes, the like the Golden Age superheroes, that they're being outlawed, that it is illegal now to be a superhero unless the government hires you to do some jobs like Superman and Wonder Woman. Batman flies under the radar uh, because he wants to be a vigilante, but he doesn't want to work for the government. So he evades capture and starts fighting crime in his own term. Uh, we see we meet a young Hal Jordan. You're going to see a lot of Easter eggs here. But uh, there's a little bit of like news clippings here explaining what happened about this big fight between Superman and Batman. All of it coming back to play. You'll see the formation of the Task Force X because Rick Flagg comes back. And then you'll start fast forwarding some years. Like in 1955, you'll see the arrival of John Johns. Uh, this right here is one of my most favorite moments. It is so heartbreaking. But this is Hal Jordan, whose father was a pilot. And he's a little bit older now. And he's fighting in the Korean War. And he gets harmed. Now, him and his co-pilot know that the war is over. So there is a ceasefire, and they're both to memorize how to say ceasefire in Korean. This is where Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen are also war correspondents during this time. But what ends up happening is that, you know, Hal's plane is shot down, and he ends up in enemy lines. Now, there is a ceasefire 
and he has to remember how to say ceasefire, that the war is over. But he cannot remember, and this guy's trying to kill him, the soldier. So he ends up shooting and killing this guy, and that image forever will live with him. That image kind of sets up who he is later on. And, and it's so heartbreaking because when he's finally picked up, he keeps repeating in Korean that it's over, it's over, that the war is no more. So he's finally able to remember after he shoots and kills that soldier. And I thought that was such a heartbreaking and such a powerful moment. And you're going to see a lot of moments like that through Darwin Cook's storytelling. It's just phenomenal the things he was able to do. And oh my gosh. Now, whenever you're talking about a story like this, whenever you're talking about something, a period piece, because we are still on the backbone of history. We're still using that as the building blocks, even though we're throwing superheroes in. We're still, he, you know, you're still having real life events. Like Wonder Woman hanging out with these ladies here in Indochina when Superman's like, hey, this is the enemy. What are you doing? And she sits there and explains to him, look, by the way, a little bit taller than Superman. Such a nice touch. But, you know, that he doesn't understand the world. He hasn't seen the world. She, she, he is just looking at it from his perspective. And he's trying to do the right thing because they're trying to stop uh, this war from expanding. So there's nice little social commentary like that. There's another character that appears through here that I mentioned a little bit earlier named John Henry. And his origin story is a, it's pretty heartbreaking. Um, we meet John Johns. Now... How he comes to Earth, you can find out for yourself, but he's one of my favorite parts about this. How he's trying to learn everything about Earth, and what he does is he gets captivated by television. And through television, he finds out that he ends up loving humans, but he wants to go back to Mars eventually, but he has this love for humans. Like, he's fallen in love with humans mainly because of television. And his favorite television shows are these detective noir stories, these crime noir stories. So he takes on the persona of Detective John Jones and ends up joining the Gotham City Police Department. And again, years are going by through here. Uh, him and, is it Slam? Yeah, Slam Brady here. They go after this cult. Now, this cult is something that, again, all these little things that aren't making sense will connect by the time you get to the third act. Uh, this cult is worshipping something called a center, they're sacrificing a human, and who does Detective John Jones, Jones, sorry, Detective John Jones, meet? He runs into Batman, who's trying to save this child too. And of course, Batman being the detective that he is, he figures out that this detective is not a human being. Something is off with him, but that will come back to play later on. So... That is kind of the pitch of this. And where all this will lead is you'll see the introduction of other characters. You'll see the introduction of the Flash. You'll finally see how Jordan wear the ring. You'll see Wonder Woman uh, and the island of Themyscira. You'll see the challengers of the unknown. You'll see villains in here appear like Captain Cold. You'll see supporting cast members like Carol Ferris through here. And the last thing I do want to bring up is this character right here. This is the character of John Henry who's taking on this persona. Because his family was killed by the Ku Klux Klan. So they try to hang him. And when they try to hang him, the new like the, the rope broke. And he still wears the rope around his neck as a symbol of what he survived. And he makes this giant hammer and just goes after the Klan. Now, this is a hero that was created for this particular story. Um, but I find him to be such a hard... Like, his family getting killed by the clan. I mean, that was something that was happening during those times. So it's not sugarcoating this era of heroes, right? Like, because there were horrible things happening in real life. So adding elements like that. And as I'm describing this, I'm probably like, uh, some of y'all are like, okay, real life history, like there's still World War II. There is the McCarthyism, like I've talked about a little bit earlier, but you know, you'll see uh, Nixon through here. And uh, John F. Kennedy, as a matter of fact, you know, like the whole idea comes from the New Frontier speech of John F. Kennedy. So probably some of you are making the connection to Watchmen. Of course, yes, yes. Very, very Watchmen, right? You have a historical fiction adding in superheroes. But unlike Watchmen and unlike Dark Knight, this particular story 
is a beautiful love letter to the Silver and Golden Age characters that inspires hope. That doesn't, you know, it shows us the flawed characters, the flaw in humanity, but also inspires hope. Like, Superman, not, like, to compare to Watchmen, right? In Watchmen, Dr. Manhattan won the Vietnam War. Single-handedly won the Vietnam War. Here, Superman can't even win one big battle that would win the war. So it, there's a little bit of, I hate to say this, this is so weird, but there's a little bit of realism to the story compared to something like Watchmen. And it elevates humanity, like superheroes elevate humanity in here. And that's what I love about this, because he gives us hope. He gives us that thing that we miss in superheroes, that ideology that they bring to the table and, and they share with the rest of the world. And the final homage page here to of course the first meeting of the justice league in the in the silver age it's just beautiful with the whole starro and I, I could show it and it also has the quote there from the new frontier john f kennedy's iconic quote uh, but i'd rather you read that there's a lot of beauty to this and you don't have to be like a dc historian to understand and appreciate the stories in here because through here you might find who you really enjoy reading about like the challengers of the unknown or you may want to read about the suicide squad from the silver age or maybe check out some of these silver age characters or their omnis like green lantern or batman or superman because these were the heroes that darwin cook grew up with that was the era of golden age and silver age and that's what he wanted to bring into this book and it's done in such a beautiful wonderful way now the other thing that is collected in here because I will stop talking about the New Frontier. I can just keep going because I love it so much. Uh, is this Justice League um, special. So this came with the DVD. I think it was the DVD that was released first. And all it is, it's just an extra story. But it takes place um, and it introduces you to this character at the time. Uh, uh, King Faraday, who was a character toward the beginning here. And this is King Faraday on orders from President Eisenhower to debrief Superman and Wonder Woman. And it's pretty much them sending Superman after Batman. And then Batman and Superman working out a plan. And there's this whole thing about Operation that they have running in Paradise Island. Uh, there's a couple stories in the back here with Sergeant Rock. There's one with the Teen Titans. And it was just a nice addition to the book. I mean... It, I'm glad that they didn't add it in between issues because it was written afterwards and like I said, like a reintroduction to this particular world for the DVD. But I'm glad it's in here and it's all the way in the back. It's actually after the extras. So let's actually take a look at some of these extras. So we have the cover gallery back here for the six issue limited series. And then you have some variant covers. And this is from issue number six, I think. Oh, and then the annotations. I love that this was added in here. Telling you where each of these issues came from or the ideas came from. Yeah, so, so far, this stuff has been collected in the absolute format. So let's keep going through here. The sketchbook. So we have the sketchbook here showing Darwin Cook's early sketches of some of these characters. And some new characters added for here. Some ideas that he had that didn't unfortunately make it to the final script because he was only working with six issues. Oh, love that. Gosh. And the way that he draws Lois Lane and Wonder Woman. My goodness. Darwin Cook. Such a freaking master. So I want to say, yeah, this was, I just got the 15th anniversary absolute edition. So all this looks really familiar and the afterward right here. And then this is where the justice league issue number one is from the animated special. Hmm. Okay. So we go from the afterward to animated special, but they're skipping the King of America. 
The Kingdom of America was that story that appeared in Solo number six that was found in the Absolute Edition. And, I, and the reason I know that is because I just read it. Uh, and it goes from there to the Justice League New Frontier special here. Yeah. So that's the special. And this is the Robin story back here, which, yeah, it's all part of that special. The Black Canary and Wonder Woman story. And, and then special section... The Art of Justice League, The New Frontier. This is from the animated movie. Um, okay. Yeah, that's that's it. The acknowledgement. So, it actually has less pages than the Absolute Edition. The 15th Anniversary Absolute Edition. 520 pages. And here is what the eye looks like. Uh, has glued binding. And it is printed in this new paper stock that they've been using... For some of their Omnis and Deluxe Editions, it's like a... I, I think some of my viewers have called it a satin type of paper stock. And please let me know in the comments down below uh, what you would call this. It's not it's not really semi-gloss. It's not quite there yet. Um, but the way that the book lays over, uh, you do get minimal gutter loss right here. I just wanted to come back to the back here where there was a spread. Alright, now let's do a quick comparison. All right, we have the absolute version over here. End sheets. I was hoping they would use those kind of end sheets. And then this piece right here. Minimal gutter loss right there, whereas this is sewn binding, so you get less gutter loss. And your table of contents. The acknowledgments start at page 528. So, meaning this one does have 530 pages, while this has 520 over here on the right. Paul Levitt's prologue, but what I wanted to see was the art and the way that it looked on this paper. It's a little bit wrinkly here, those waves, uh, but I just showed that on my, what was it, the Judgment Day Omnibus, so it's not just DC, I mean, it's everybody, it happens from time to time, some Dark Horse hardcovers have that too, but it disappears after a couple pages. Uh, the colors seem to be a lot more vibrant here on the Absolute Edition. It's really an unfair comparison. I'll probably do a retro view of the Absolute Edition if you if you folks want me to. Yeah. I mean, it's not bad. It's it's a damn, damn good color. It's just the art, though. Oh, my gosh. It's so good. But I did want to do a quick little comparison as to that. All right. So, get to the cover gallery to see exactly what's missing. Because I want to say I think all that is missing are those 10 pages or so from the solo story so so far same thing you can see color differences which is very minor honestly acknowledgements i'm so glad or the annotation sorry i'm so glad the annotations made it to every edition this stuff is wonderful to me do your homework and show your annotations and darwin cook sure as hell did and it's really interesting when you see like the first appearance of these characters through the story it's attention to detail, because that's exactly how they would appear in the pages of DC Comics, like the superheroes that came, who came first. Um, a sketch is here. Thought they skipped one. Nope. It's all intact. Yeah. Soups. And some of the things that didn't make it. Character study guide. Challengers of the Unknown. I'll be honest, I, when I first picked this up, I thought it was Tim Cell drawing these issues when it was coming out in 2004. I was excited for it. Regardless, I, I wasn't familiar with Darwin Cook because I wasn't reading Catwoman at the time. I had just come back to comics in 2002. Uh, but when I started seeing the sketches, I was like, oh, this stuff is really good. Tim Cell has gotten awesome. And I love Tim Cell just as much as Darwin Cook. But I thought it was the same artist. I don't know why, what, why I thought that, but... It wasn't until I got the first issue, the first single issue, that I was like, oh, this is a different guy. Whoops. Yeah, so all of it is the same so far. The sketches, the covers, and I think... Yeah, so over here, you go to the Frontierland, and you jump to the afterward, and you kick off the Justice League one-shot, and over here is the King of America uh, from Solo number 6. And then this is where you start the Justice League one-shot. And everything else, I think, should be identical. Let's get to the ending here. So we're at the end there, at the end of that particular story. And the animated sketches. Did I show? Yep. Show that. Wonder Woman. Okay. So all that is missing is just that story from Solo number six. 
Not sure if they were going to add that and other extra stuff in here. And then at the last second, they changed their mind. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this deluxe edition, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know near mint condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount, quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count and build. And of course the quick comparison to the absolute edition. Let me know in the comments down below if you've never read this and you just picked up the deluxe edition because you've only heard about it and you're going in completely blind. I'm so jealous of that to get to experience this book for the first time. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to smash that like button. And also, if you didn't dig this book that much, you know, there are people that didn't dig it. Like my wife did not like it that much, which just kind of... That and Starman, she gets one more strike and that's it, man. But anyway, if you didn't like it, yeah, leave the comments down below as to why. But that's it, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Smash that like button on the way out. Stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.